new CarPlay AI Box USB media adapter from the One Car Stereo brand called AI Box Ultra. All right, so let's do uh, the unboxing of this uh, One Car Stereo AI Box Ultra CarPlay adapter. It comes in the standard box. Uh, you know, most of these devices would have similar packaging. Um, black box inside. Um, let's remove it so you get the user uh, manual or the instruction guide. You've got all the details on how to connect this uh, in your car. Uh, you've got the device itself and uh, we'll come back to this uh, in a second. Let's look at the other contents in the box. So let's remove, remove this, like that, and you've you get some cables inside. Now these are the cables to connect this adapter in the USB slot of your car. Um, so basically these are the two main cables to connect the device. Uh, you get a type C to type C and then you also get a type C to type A. Now the type C slot connects with the device. This is a spot. And then the other end connects to the USB cable of your car. Now, depending on the slot in your car, some cars have a type A connection. Now the newer models have a type C connections. So you just need to use one of these cables. All right, so this is uh, the device now, uh, a circular device, all plastic. You've got the name of the brand, one car stereo right on top. At the back, you've got this spacing for the ventilation. Um, now in terms of the connection, this is the type C slot. This is where you connect these cables. And then you've got two more slots. One is for the TF card or the SD memory card. And the other one is the SIM card. Now it also comes with this SIM card pin SIM card opener pin, all right? So this is uh, now the device. Now let me take this out to my car, connect it, and then we start testing the different functions and features of this One Car Stereo AI Box Ultra CarPlay adapter. So keep watching, guys. All right, friends, so I'm in my car and I've got uh, the device with me. Now what I'll do is I'll connect this device with the USB cable and the USB slot in my car. All right, so this is the main home page uh, or the, you know, uh, the landing page of the Android 13 operating system on this device. Now it looks very, very nice. It's slightly different to some of the recently tested devices. Um, I've just reduced the brightness of my car's screen a little bit. So it captures very clearly on the camera. Otherwise it was just blowing out the light. So you can see this is the landing page. It's more of like a, a split screen all in one kind of a landing page where you can have most of the apps appearing on the screen itself without actually going into different views and right at the bottom as then you have a full app list you've got settings you've got carplay and then some of the recently used apps and you know these can be changed you can add more favorites to these so you just click on this plus sign and this takes you to the full app list like this and then you can simply go and click on any of the apps that gets added to the bottom this is the favorite bar and you can see it's got about 10 apps so you can have 10 apps right at the bottom to be used as your favorites and then you know you don't really need to go to any of the other views so but if you want to see the full app view you simply click on this button it takes you to the full app view these are all the different apps that are installed on this device but you can go to the apk store or you can go to the google play store and you can um, you know install more apps on this device it's got uh, 128 gigs of internal memory plus you can add sd card for more memory so you can install tons of even heavy um, applications like games and so on so these are all the apps you can see all these are the standard app now Keep in mind that this device works in cars that support wired CarPlay or Android Auto connectivity. The other bit is this device is ideal for cars with touchscreen like mine. Right, so this is uh, you know how it looks. All the apps are are already most of the important ones are already pre-installed, but you can always go and install more apps. All right, so the very first thing uh, that I will show you is how to connect this device with internet. Now, there are two options. One, you can either insert a SIM card onto the SIM card tray on the device itself, or you can connect this device with your mobile's hotspot. Now, um, I've already connected this to my mobile's hotspot. So what you need to do is just go to the settings, internet, 
and then look for your uh, network and connect it. I've already connected it with my signal. So very easy to connect to internet, two options that you have. And once it's connected, you can then start using all these different kind of uh, applications on this device. All right, so now it's connected. You can see the connectivity is active here. The first thing I would like to test on this is uh, YouTube. Now keep in mind that uh, this device gives you the option of watching video content even when you're driving, even when the car is in motion, is moving, you can still watch video content on this, either through the SD card video playback or you can watch Netflix, YouTube. Any of these apps allows you to watch video content even when the car is in motion. However, it is very, very dangerous and risky. I do not recommend you watch any of the video content while the car is in motion or when you're driving the car. But just for the, the sake of testing this device, I can show you that YouTube is working. Uh, let's pick up a video. Um, just want to pick up one of the widescreen videos like this to show you how it appears on a full screen. Um, let's go full screen. You can see 1080p full HD is more than enough. It gives you amazing clarity on a small screen in your car. And as you can see, looks very, very nice. This is a full screen, widescreen movie that is, is uh, playing. So that's why you get a full view. Um, you know, if you don't get a widescreen, then, you know, depending on the size of the screen and the aspect ratio of the screen, you will see the, the image or the picture automatically fits the screen. And let me now, the other thing is this device is connected to the system of the car so you can use the steering wheel controls to operate this device so i can see reduce uh, increase the volume yep. and the other very important thing is that i've tested there is absolutely no audio to video sync issues on this device in this one i've tested there is absolutely no lag or any sync issues when it's between the audio and the video. So YouTube working quite nicely. It, it can play up to full HD. Uh, and that's what I would suggest. If you want to come down to 720p, that's also good enough for a small car screen. All right, so the other thing I would like to test on this is the navigation app. Now, um, there are apps uh, which are built into this, um, you know, like Google Maps, which is this. You also have the Waze app. So depending on your preference, you can, you know, use any of the navigation apps. In fact, this is Google Maps appearing here. You can change this to Waze. So the, the shortcut view will have the Waze application running. But if you click on this, it basically gives you the directions. And uh, if you go to the full app view, let's say like this, you get a full view of basically the navigation, right? So let's go to, let's click on this, turn on the location, and then we can just go to any of the all right, let's pick any of these locations just to see if, if it is working. There you go. So navigation is working. Looks quite nice in this uh, on this screen. Um, you know, you can see the screen is very, very responsive. And this is Google Maps. You can change the navigation to any of the other apps that you want. You can simply click on, uh, on Waze and then continue with the location. And then obviously it takes a you know few extra steps for the first uh, you know first time you to you run uh, Waze, and after that it will be quite quick. So you can see very nice. You can just simply click on any of the locations, and it's very very quick. As you can see, it's very quick, very responsive. Um, it's um, eight gigs of RAM running on this device, and that's why you see it's very quick and responsive. There you go. So you can use any navigation app on this device. Now the other bit uh, which is very important on on this device and i really like that option is called the split screen option where you actually get two applications running side by side at the same time so what we need to do is click on this mini menu click on this split screen and then it gives you the running app it puts it on the left side so waze goes on the left side of the screen and then you can pick another let's say youtube to appear on the right side of the screen so very easy you can play anything on youtube 
uh, like this it gives you a full view and then on the left side you have the navigation and both these screens or apps are active and you can you know it's perfect for uh, for people uh, riding you know your family and friends your co-passengers so while you're driving you can follow the navigation while the others can watch something on the right side of the screen so a very very useful uh, feature to have on this device all right, so this device is fully loaded. There are so many different applications. And then uh, you have uh, music and uh, video. So if you've inserted an SD memory card with uh, with some audio video content, you can play that on, on this device. Um, you've got built-in GPS system, so you don't really need an external antenna, which is really good option to have on this. Basically, this is a GPS test. Um, this basically tells you that the GPS is on, which is very good. Um, now, the other bit is there are so many other applications pre-installed like Disney Plus, you've got Netflix, HBO Max, IPTV, and then you've got TikTok, you can install Facebook, Instagram, you've got VLC player to run the videos or the audio. So quite a few of the pre-installed, but you can again go to the Play Store or APK Store to install more apps on this device. So everything working quite nicely um, the other bit i wanted to show you is uh, mobile screen mirroring we need to click on this which is the easy connection this is where you actually connect the device with your mobile so i'm going to use my iphone for mobile screen mirroring um, and what i need to do is i need to first make sure that my mobile and the screen uh, on the device is on the same network so you know on the mobile's hotspot and the next step is basically go to mobile uh, screen mirroring this button here um, and then wait for the carpet to appear you can see the carpet is appearing click on the carpet option and then in a few seconds i should be able to see um, my mobile's hot screen on on the screen of the car there you go so very easy uh, very quick i know it's a bit dark because i'm kind of uh, filming inside um, but you can see this is my mobile iphone and then this is the same view on the screen of my car and it's very quick there is no lag when i move any movement on the screen is instant on the screen of the car there you go there you go let's go to instagram and check out see very quick to load instant no lag at all all right so let's go back stop mirroring and then it basically takes you back to this view all right so the next thing i would like to test on this device is the all important wireless carplay connectivity uh, so what we need to do is click on this i in car link takes us to this page this is the main uh, connections page the next step is basically go to your iphone on the iPhone, uh, go to the Bluetooth settings and look for this device called InCarLink Max. This one, click on it, pair the device, allow it to sync contacts or not. And then it will start uh, detecting the connection. And then in a few seconds, we should be able to see the homepage of Apple CarPlay appearing on the screen here. There you go. So very quick this is a one-time setup it takes you know a few extra seconds for the for the very first time when you connect to the apple carplay but once it's connected then every time you you know switch on the car it automatically gets you to this page you don't have to do this bluetooth connection again now let's test the wireless android auto also all right so now let's uh, connect the device with the wireless android auto system so what you need to do is basically click on this button in car link again just like apple carplay brings us to this main page this is the landing page of the connections page next step is basically go to your um, android phone i've got the samsung android phone with me um, and then obviously look for this device called in car link max um, you just need to scan it and then we should be able to see the in car link max uh, as a device appearing on the on the bluetooth connectivity here you go let's click on it pair the device allow it to sync contacts and favorites and then in a few seconds again we should be able to see the home page of android auto appearing on the screen of the car there you go so again it's very quick just like apple carplay this is a one-time setup you just need to connect your android mobile with the device through the bluetooth once and then every time you come in the car 
it automatically connects to the Android Auto operating system that looks like this. This is a very nice layout. This is the new Android Auto. You've got the navigation running on the left side and then you've got the media playing on the right side. And then again, you can use the navigation on Android Auto or the Android native Android operating system on this device. Click on this. Now this basically takes you to the full app view. These are all the different apps available on uh, Android Auto. But all I wanted to test was to see if I can connect to the wireless Android Auto through this new one car stereo device as you can see it, it it connects it connects quite nicely um, you know everything is working so quite happy with the wireless android auto connectivity as well